All right, in this example, we are going to build a bearing housing. And we will see how can we actually model quite a complex piece using the very simple geometric entities and using the revolving. This time we will use, let's say, 1060 aluminum alloy, just for a change. And the bearing housing that we describe will actually be made by sketching several, like three rectangles and the center line. That's all what we need to generate that beautiful model. Going to make a horizontal center line in a sketch. And I'm going to dimension that horizontal center line to be, let's say, a two inch long. Now I'm going to create the outline of the profile, of the one side profile of the bearing housing, and that will really be just the three rectangles. And I'm going to make the first one to be a collinear with my center. Going to make that the, with the coordinate origin, I'm going to make these two to be the collinear, to be vertical. Going to dimension the total length of my first rectangle to be according to the drawing 1.4375. As you can see, my units are showing to default only to a two units. To change that, we will go to a tools, options, document properties, units. And under units, I'm going for a length to change from a two decimal point to a four decimal point. And click OK. And now you can see that I see them all in a four decimal point. Now, I'm going to make another rectangle somewhere here, no, like this. And I'm going to make the third rectangle, which will be anchored in the upper right corner and which will be to some extent. This is my entire profile. Now I need to place dimensions. From the book, from the drawings, I can see that this dimension from this edge to this edge is 0.5313, as well as dimension from this edge here, to the central edge is also the same, 0.5313. I even don't need to specify this dimension if I just, actually I will need because this is not broken, so I will specify this back to 0.5313. If this was broken line, then I was able to say that those two are equal. All right, so now we have to specify one more distance, and that's the distance of this little cut of 0 0.375. 0.375. Now we need to specify Diameters. Diameters we will specify by specifying the line on the profile and clicking on the line, then clicking on the central axis and pulling dimension line in the opposite side of the profile sketch. So smart dimension. And let's say the most uh, the outermost diameter, so the outermost line, click, left click, click on the axis and pull down below the axis and let's see what this one should be 2.185 2.185 click ok now we are going to specify the next one the bottom again click on this line click on the axis and that is going to be 1.875 1.875. Now we are going to specify this distance 0.869 will be this diameter of the hole. 0.869. Click OK. And finally, 
the inner cut is to 2.209, 2.0029. So it'll be this line and this line to a 2.029. As I enter the last dimension, you can see that my sketch is fully defined. Now I'm going to close the sketch and I'm going to create a revolt feature and it will be revolved both space and it automatically picked up my line 360 degree and I'm going to click on a select contour and I'm going to choose this contour and the inner contour and here is my bearing my, my bearing housing and let's check if we are 1060 aluminum alloys evaluate mass properties it will be exactly 0.2 pounds. Okay, now it is up to you to make the model of this. And as you can see in the parametric tree, this model has only one input. The other way to make this model will be to make just the one big rectangle in a one sketch and then to have a three inputs and then to do certain cuts, like you know, for example, to carve this piece out and to build as a separate piece the inner one. However, in this case, for me at least, it seems to be faster that we just throw everything in a single profile. Okay, so this concludes this demonstration.